My name is Chalar Oske. I'm an assistant professor at the Civil Engineering, Civil and Environmental Engineering Department at Vanderbilt. I am the director of the Multi-Scale Computational Mechanics Laboratory at Vanderbilt University. And we are looking into modeling and simulation of really complicated structures. And uh, one of the things that we uh, particularly focus on is uh, the failure of these materials on their given uh, different loading conditions and environmental conditions. Uh, we uh, come up with computational methods and computational models for doing so. And one of the things that we particularly focus on is uh, the behavior in multiple spatial as well as multiple temporal scales. So the, we have a number of different research projects that are uh, ongoing right now. Uh, and they're looking at very different materials and very and different uh, applications. Uh, for example, one of the research that uh, we're doing is on uh, the survivability characterization of uh, infrastructure materials and uh, infrastructure uh, in general. And uh, here, one of the interesting uh, problems is that if you have a structure, for example, a building in a, uh, in a military zone or in a civilian zone, uh, how can we protect, uh, protect these structures uh, from impact and blast hazards? One of the new materials uh, that we call polyurea uh, has shown some very favorable characteristics uh, of impact survivability uh, or impact mitigation and blast mitigation. Uh, that is uh, one of the model. Uh, that is one of the materials that we are trying to model, and uh, I have a graduate student, Tong Kui, who is uh, doing a lot of research on this. And what we're trying to do is come, uh, try to come up with uh, materials based on polyurea. For example, polyurea that uh, is enriched with uh, nano or micro constituents, such as uh, carbon, fi carbon nanofibers or carbon microfibers that can increase the survivability of these structures when applied as a coating. Uh, this project is uh, supported by a National Science Foundation and uh, it, its, uh, its applications are going to be numerous if uh, the material behavior of these very complicated uh, loading environments and very complicated materials can be, uh, can be really understood. Uh, one application, as I said, is the uh, infrastructure survivability. Another application of this is in uh, naval, uh, naval uh, structures such as ship hulls and if you can for example coat ship hulls with these materials they might be a lot more resistant to uh, blast and uh, blast induced damage in, structure, in, in naval structures. Also uh, you can coat uh, arm, uh, helmets of um, of you know soldiers in, uh, in military zones that might also help with uh, impact damage to, uh, to to soldiers themselves. So it could be a personal protection as well as infrastructure protection in, uh, in various applications. So as I said, another application that we are looking at is, or the another research that we are looking at is. Uh, the uh, life prediction of composite structures subjected to cyclic loading. This is of particular interest to uh, Air Force and we are actually working with the Air Force to, uh, uh, to conduct this research and uh, in this research we come up with multi-scale uh, computational models and methods to evaluate the response of large-scale uh, composite structures and try to understand how long they will survive under uh, certain environmental and loading conditions. Uh, my graduate student Robert Crouch has been working in this project and he's about to graduate actually. He's, uh, he's going to be graduating this summer and uh, we will be recruiting another student to continue on this research. And one of the interesting things about this research is that it doesn't only involve multiple spatial scales that has been under investigation for a long time, but it also involves multiple uh, temporal scales. So it is both a multi-scale and a multi-time uh, scale and multi-spatial scale problem. Another research project that we are uh, currently starting up is, uh, is
is a collaborative project with another uh, uh, professor at Vanderbilt University, Professor Florence Sanchez. And here uh, we are looking at uh, a very traditional material, concrete, but we are trying to understand it from a very high-tech point of view. So if you have the concrete and you try, you're trying to make it stronger and more survivable in different environments such as impact and blast, one of the things that you can do is to incorporate some uh, nanoparticles uh, such as carbon nanofibers and carbon nanotubes and so on to uh, get it stronger. But uh, there has been very little understanding when it comes to uh, the interfaces and the strength of the interfaces between concrete uh, or cement and uh, these nano reinforcements. Uh, our goal in this project is to understand uh, the interface uh, properties, particularly the relationship between chemistry and uh, mechanical properties of these uh, materials and uh, these interfaces so that we can incorporate different chemical uh, configurations and do different chemical functionalizations to uh, control the strength as well as uh, the fracture formations in these materials. So uh, this uh, research has very recently started and supported by Vanderbilt University at the moment. So um, Paul is a graduate student of mine who has been working with me for some time. He just uh, recently uh, received his master's uh, degree and he's going for his PhD. And he uh, is involved uh, in some of the fundamental aspects of multi-scale modeling and his uh, success is critical to uh, the development of our program in the multi-scale computational mechanics laboratory. One of the things he's currently looking at is to come up with some reduced order models, some models that we can use to solve very large scale systems. One of the difficulties uh, with uh, multi-scale modeling is that it takes a very long time to, on the, to simulate and understand the response of large scale structures. Uh, because we are going into very small details of uh, the material response. Uh, what Paul is trying to do is to come up with some very, very fast yet very accurate models so that we can understand the response at the large scale without compromising on the level of accuracy and detail that we go into in the smaller scales.